Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on to speak to you today. My name is David McRae. I am a senior physiotherapist at the Sports Surgery Clinic, working in the sports medicine department. I'm here today to talk to you about injury prevention strategies for golf, with a particular focus today on low back pain in golf. So I thought I would start the presentation by reviewing the physical activity guidelines published by the American College of Sports Medicine. So you can see at the top of the slide here that the American College of Sports Medicine recommends 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise five days a week it can often be referred to as well as 150 minutes of total exercise per week. And on my next slide, you'll see that golf is considered a low to moderate intensity exercise. So golf can absolutely help contribute to us achieving our physical activity guidelines in healthy adults. It doesn't quite fit the category of vigorous intensity exercise, but definitely it fits the category of moderate intensity exercise and can contribute to our health in that sense. At the bottom of the slide there, you can see that they recommend resistance training two to three days per week. And this can often be the forgotten piece for golfers. The resistance training is going to be a particular point of focus for us today, as this is often the piece that allows us to stay healthy and to improve performance in our golf. I thought we'd also start by having a look at the demands of the, the sport of golf. Um, golf is often perceived as maybe a leisurely activity. For many of us, it's a, it's a hobby and it's a pastime. We don't often see it as a sport or um, as a way of us achieving our physical activity goals. So there's been some nice studies done where they analyzed golfers and um, physiological data. And you can see at the top here. So in terms of the cardiorespiratory um, toll, the average heart rate during an 18 hole round of golf is approximately 60% of people's max heart rates. So for someone like myself, that might be averaging kind of 120 beats per minute for for nearly three hours. If you look down below that, then you can see the average walking distance over an 18 hole around of golf is anywhere between nine and a half to 10 and a half kilometers. And obviously that can be halved if you're playing nine holes. The average standing duration can be uh, close to four hours actually. So three hours, 45 minutes on average. And again, close to half to that if you're playing nine holes. So golf is absolutely um, an activity that puts a high demand on both our cardiorespiratory system, but also our musculoskeletal system. And it's important that we have some strategies in place to be able to manage that volume and demand as we age, especially if we like to play frequently. So injuries in golf, is it an issue? So in the world of, kind of sports medicine and research, injuries are reported per 1000 hours of participation. So if you were to participate in golf for 1,000 hours, the current injury rates are 0.28 to 0.6 injuries. Seeing as golf's an individual sport as well, you can see here that 1,000 hours equates to nearly 250 rounds of golf. And that's not to say that if you play 250 rounds of golf, you're going to get injured. But at the moment, among amateur golfers, that's the current injury rate that's being seen. So how would this compare to other kind of popular sports that we like to use to stay fit and active? So golf's reported injury rates are low to moderate when compared to other popular sports. So if we look here at football, football reports up to eight injuries per 1,000 hours. Running, so recreational running, a lot of us like to do 5Ks, uh, train for marathons, things like that. Depending on the research that you read, that can be varying anywhere from 2.5 to 12 injuries per 1,000 hours. So overall, golf can be considered a very safe sport to participate in. And the injury rate is actually a lot lower than a lot of the other popular sports that we like to do to stay fit. So a particular um, point of focus for today's presentation is going to be low back pain in golf. The reason for that being is that low back pain is consistently cited as the most common golf injury. You can see here, depending on the research that you're reading, it can be anywhere from 18 to 54% of all golf injuries are related to the lower back. A common misconception about back pain in golf might be that it only affects older golfers or that it might only affect low handicap golfers because they swing the club faster. 
the research is actually showing that it equally affects young and old golfers, equally affects male and females, and it equally affects high and low handicap golfers. So in order to try and get an idea of how we can prevent low back pain in golf, seeing as it is golf's most prevalent injury, it's worth having a look at some of the most common causes for back pain in golf. So there has been some nice research done in this area and some common and consistent themes that emerge are displayed on the screen at the minute. So the first column here, you'll see the title repetitive strain. So low back pain in golf is more associated with the repeated stress of the golf swing, as opposed to the trauma from a single swing. So this is not to say that you cannot hurt your back from a single swing, but more often than not, it's associated with the cumulative load and the repeated stress from the golf swing. And most back pain we see in golf will be that gradual onset in nature as opposed to the acute in nature. So if you can identify it early, we might be able to get on top of it and prevent it from getting any worse. In the second column, you'll see another consistent theme that's seen in the research is trunk strength and control. So golfers with low back pain appear to have abnormal trunk muscle recruitment and less muscle endurance. And the good thing about this is this is something that is trainable and can be improved with rehabilitation or injury prevention strategies, which we'll discuss later on. Similarly, you'll see this, the third column, trunk strength and control as well, that increased side bending through impact can increase the trail side shear and compressive forces. So as the golfer makes contact with the club head to the ball, an increased side bend through that trail side can increase the load and compressive forces through the spine. Again, this is something that can be improved with technique changes and can also be trained and rehabilitated with some of the strategies we'll discuss later on. The final column is hip strength and control. So our lead hip on the golf swing is where we generate most of our power from. So if we have an underperforming lead hip or restrictions in our lead hips mobility, this can lead to compensations that increase stress on the lumbar spine. And again, this is something we can target through exercise strategies, and we'll discuss at a later point in today's presentation. So before we move on to the exercise component, it's important that we actually look at the key physical qualities that underpin the golf swing. So you can see here, there's three pieces of the pie. Rather than talking about it first, I thought I might show you it first. So what I have prepared here is a video of Rory McIlroy swinging in slow motion. Now, I don't expect everybody to swing as beautifully as Rory does, nor hit the ball as well as Rory does. What I'm more concerned about today is really looking at the physical qualities that allow Rory to get such a consistent and powerful swing. So we can see as Rory initiates his backswing here, we get to a, roughly the halfway point, his arms and his shoulders have stayed completely straight. So all of the rotation is occurring here through his thoracic and lumbar spine. So kind of through his trunk and his rib cage and also through his hips. He continues this rotation to get him to the top of his backswing. So there's a big demand on Rory's trunk mobility and hip mobility to get him into this point consistently and smoothly. At the top of the swing, his trunk muscle and his hips are going to have to decelerate that club head. So he's going to require some great strength and control through his, his trunk and his hips to be able to control that club head at speed. At this point, he initiates his downswing. And again, the vast majority of his power at this point is coming through his lead hip in this position here and through his trunk strength and his trunk control, which leads Rory to be able to generate great power and speed of the club head through the ball. So if we look back here, we have trunk hip rotation, the mobility to allow us to access and get into these positions to generate some good speed and power from. We have trunk muscle strength to be able to control that motion of decelerating the club and then re-accelerating the club and hip strength in a similar vein to be able to decelerate the club and accelerate the club. 
So for the next portion of the presentation, what we will focus on is exercise strategies to try and maintain each segment of the pie from the previous slide. So these exercises can be incorporated into your pre-golf warm-up or could be incorporated into your weekly routine in order to maintain, for example, trunk rotation, hip rotation, or trunk and hip rotation strength. So we'll start with trunk rotation, which is going to allow you to reach the top of your backswing comfortably and follow through on your downswing comfortably. So this first exercise you can see here, Tim has himself set up in a half lunge position. He has a football squeezed between his knee and the wall and he's set up with his hands in front as if he's holding a gun. So his goal here is to keep his knee squeezed against this football, not to let the football drop away from the wall. If you don't have a football, you could use a cushion, you can use a foam roller or whatever else you might have that suits that. Then from here, he's trying to maintain good contact with his knee and to rotate and open up his chest. So his rib cage is rotating around, and his chest is opening up. On this next video, Tim is lying on his side in a similar position. And again, this knee is squeezing the football down into the floor. And that's going to fix his hips in one position. And then from there, he's trying to wrap his hand all the way around the floor to the other side and then bring it back until his hand is on top of the other hand. And really what he's working on here again is trunk rotation by pinning down his left arm and pinning down his legs and his hips. So the only portion of him that's allowed to move here is his upper body and his trunk. A couple of other sample ideas for trunk rotation, which you can incorporate into your week or your uh, pre-golf warm-up. This one, Tim is lying on his back. Again, he is pinning his arms to the floor and he's pinning the upper portion of his back to the floor. His feet are his anchor point and he's rocking his knees side to side like a windscreen wiper, trying to create good rotation through the low back and the middle portion of his back. To make it a little bit harder, you can lift your knees up and the exact same movement, letting the knees rock side to side, just like he's doing here. In this video here, Tim is using a speed stick. You could be using your driver. You could be using a speed stick if you have it or a broomstick at home, for example. So Tim is setting himself up almost in a golf position. So he has a slight bend in the knees, slight forward lean as if he's standing over the ball on the tee. From there, he has the speed stick crossed across his chest. And what he's really focusing on doing is pinning his hips in one position, but trying to encourage as much trunk rotation as he can get. You can see this top position, the stick ends up pointing directly down. His shoulders are stacked one on top of the other. So he's been able to rotate his trunk really well to get him to a position that mimics the top of his backswing. Looking at the trunk again, but this time shifting our focus to trunk strength and endurance. Again, minimal equipment is required for this one, but Tim here is using a power band. He has it tied onto something sturdy at home and the band clasped between the hands. You can see his setup again mimics the top of a, um, or the setup for a shot on the tee. His hands are in front. He's a slight forward lean and a slight bend in the knees. This band is going to be pulling him to his left hand side and it's up to the trunk muscle to be able to stop that rotational force. So as he allows that band to pull him back, he's trying to control it and then he pulls it back. He's holding that top position and using his core and using his trunk to control that movement. On the right hand side, we have a similar one. This time he's using a cable machine if you have access to a gym, you might be able to get access to a cable machine. If not, again, a band similar to the one Tim has in this video could be used. He's in a half kneeling position. And again, he's trying to fix his trunk in one position, but row his hands across his body and he's relying on his trunk strength to do so. One final exercise for trunk strength again is something called a Paloff press. So the band is tied around something sturdy at home. So it could, be a, it could be a door frame, it could be a pole, whatever you have, a banister on your stairs. From here, you're trying to press that band out into straight arms. 
and hold. So pressing the band straight out and holding, not letting that band pull you back to the left-hand side. So this band is going to pull Sean this way and he's having to use his trunk strength and endurance to withstand that force. So if we move our focus over towards hip rotation again, so having good hip rotation is crucial for any golf swing, particularly if our goal is to prevent overcompensation through the lower back. So a couple of simple ideas which could be incorporated into your week. On the left-hand side, Sean here is sitting on the floor and you can see here, his goal really is to keep his hips on the floor, keep his heels on the floor, and he's allowing his knees to rock one at a time back and forth over like that. You can see both hips working through a full rotation just here. And as he comes to the other side, good rotation through the right hip. This one on the right hand side is almost like a yoga pose, often referred to as the pigeon pose. So Sean has his left foot tucked up underneath him here. He has his left hip into a deep externally rotated position. To make it harder, he's leaned down onto his elbows and he's reached his arms out. But it's perfectly okay to start in this start position here. A progression is to come down onto your elbows and to reach out further in front. Two final quick hip rotation exercises. Similar to the last one, Sean is in a half lunge position here. He's reaching his front arm underneath his front leg. You can see he's also getting a little bit of trunk rotation here as well, which is an added benefit. But this left hip is really being challenged from a hip rotation perspective. He's reaching as far underneath his leg as he can. And then he's slowly rotating up and trying to reach for the sky. So some great trunk rotation happening here, as well as some great hip rotation. One final exercise on hip rotation. You can see here, Tim again is using a speed stick, but that could easily be your driver on the, on the first tee. And what Tim is doing here is trying to pin his shoulders and his chest in one position and trying to limit movement through his spine and forcing his hips and his pelvis to rotate around his fixed foot. His foot is clamped in behind his knee to pin him into that location. And he's just freeing up his hip before his, his round of golf starts. If we shift our focus now to hip strength, we spoke earlier about how the lead hip has quite a high demand in terms of not only controlling the swing, but also to generate a lot of our power in our swing. So all we really need to work on strength um, here is a, is a mini band. And again, could be incorporated into your pre-golf warm-up in the clubhouse. It could be done at home as well. So Tim has a black mini band here tied around his knees. He's hanging onto something sturdy. So he's sitting backwards. His feet are fixed. Okay. So his feet are glued and not allowed to move. His hips and his shoulders are also not allowed to move. So what we have here is he's just opening up his knees against the resistance of that tight mini band. And what's doing that is the hip musculature around here. If he was to allow his feet to roll, or if he was allow his hips to move up and down or his shoulders to move up and down, we would get compensation and other um, muscle groups working. But we're trying to target hip strength here. So we want to fix the feet in position. We want to fix the hips and the shoulders in position. So the only muscle groups allowed to work to generate that force against the band is the hip. Another simple exercise for hip strength using a mini band. Mini band is tied around the top of the knees. Tim is trying to fix his uh, shoulders and his back into almost a golf position as if he's standing over a ball. His feet are shoulder width apart. And from there, he's making some small controlled steps to the side. And what's allowing him to do that is the strength of the muscles on the outside of his hip, particularly the glute med and the glute min. One final exercise in terms of hip strength. Sean here has a slightly longer band 
and it's tied again around something sturdy at home or a squat rack in the gym. He has the band then tied around the front knee. And what he's looking at doing here is generating some force outwards against that band. So similar to the exercise earlier on, his foot is pinned in position. His torso isn't moving in any shape or form, but he is using his left hip here to generate some power and force against the stretch of that band. So that kind of concludes today's talk. Um, hopefully you've learned something a little bit about back pain in golf in terms of how it happens and maybe some simple strategies to try and address it from happening in the first place or if you are struggling with back pain in terms of trying to resolve it as well using exercise as a tool to do so. Um, if you're unsure of where to start, I'm more than happy for you to ask a question during the Q&A session and either myself or maybe my colleague Luke Harf will be able to answer that for you. Or if you're looking for an individualized approach or you want to get an assessment to see where you need to work on the most, please feel free to book in with a physiotherapist or an SNC coach here at SSC Sports Medicine Department for a time that suits you. So thank you very much for having me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to fielding any questions you might have in the Q&A session. Hi, David. Thanks for that great talk. Now, just before um, David does the Q&A with me, I'm going to bring Luke back in because we have had a few people asking exactly what is golf lab, Luke. So I think give a quick, a quick synopsis of what it is and then we'll go back to David. Yeah, absolutely. So golf lab really is um, a testing service that we can then provide a personalized strength conditioning program for you to help your injury risk and your performance on the course. So it involves strength testing for your gluteal muscles, essentially the, the, the big muscles at the back of the body that can produce all the power for your swing. We look at how well you can rotate. We look at your the amount of force you can produce into the ground, which is really important for your club head speed, but also protecting your lower back as well. We look at how much power you can produce in both double and single leg. And then we go into your personalized program. So off the back of that, we can write a, a personalized program for you to kind of suit where you're at. Now, it really is for everybody, all kind of levels and every age demographic, because we individualize the tests kind of to, to whatever level you feel comfortable at, really, and your injury history. So um, I wouldn't be too worried about thinking it's too advanced for you. I'd definitely say it, it's pitched at, at everyone and we can kind of make it as hard and easy as you'd like. And then off the back of that, the whole idea is it the, the program is individualized to you. You know, it, you get the program that's suited to your level. Lovely. Listen, thanks, Luke, for that. Um, and um, we'll now join David again. So David, we'll start off again with you. Um, so we have Tim. Tim says he's got two bulging discs in the neck on the right side and also some inner intercostal muscle injury from years ago in his right side. He finds they impede his backswing and he does stretch before he plays. Is there anything else you can suggest? He's 72. Yeah, so these conditions, first of all, can be can be really quite painful. So what that can do is lead to some protective behaviors setting in um, and these protective behaviors, if they, if they linger for a period of time, it can lead to a loss of sort of mobility and range of motion, which then can impede your swing, particularly the back swing. So if you looked at my presentation, you can see that the back, the golf swing is broken down into a few different components. Um, and I think probably an important step for Tim here would be to break the golf swing down into different components and to try and target each area to ensure that he's staying mobile in the right areas that he can actually swing pain-free. If he's struggling and doesn't know exactly where to start, I probably would recommend getting uh, an assessment with either a physiotherapist or an S&C coach to, to give him some advice where to start. Okay, lovely. Uh, Alan was saying, um, with a pain-free meniscus tear, is it okay to do deadlifts and squats in the gym? Yes, it definitely is. Um, Pain-free meniscus tears are very common. Um, yeah. Meniscus tears can be seen on MRI scans in, in aging populations, and they don't necessarily correlate with someone who's having pain. Um, it's often a sign of just a degenerating knee with, with years of wear and tear. Yeah. The important aspect will be that squatting and deadlifting is, is safe, and the main thing is to keep it comfortable so that they should be not feeling pain when they do it, but at the same time, it is challenging to ensure that all the structures around the knee are helping that knee as it ages. Okay, lovely. Thank you. One from Robin. Um, if you lose muscle mass due to injury, can it be rebuilt again? 
Yeah, absolutely. This is a really common sort of um, issue that physios encounter all the time, especially if a patient has spent time maybe immobilized in a boot or in a cast or on crutches, for example, they often lose a lot of strength and they often lose a lot of muscle size. So by working with the physio, we definitely can rebuild that muscle size and that muscle strength. And it's important that the exercise that you're selecting are appropriate and that the stimulus you're getting from those exercises are sufficient to actually build your strength. So basically that these exercises are difficult enough for you to get the strength results you're looking for. Lovely. Um, Patrick, um, have you any tips for SI joint problems playing golf? Um, you have to use a buggy, um, but it's because difficulty walking after an hour. Yeah, um, probably the first step for, for Patrick here might be to start off with an assessment um, to ensure that this is actually an SIJ or an SI joint problem in itself. Um, your back pain can, ca can be caused by all sorts of reasons. Um, but first and foremost, you'd look to rule out some of the more sinister or serious causes for pain. An assessment with a physio can do that. Um, you may or may not need a scan based on the the findings from that assessment but if if the more sinister causes are ruled out then a rehabilitation program can be developed working on the areas that you need to work on to try and improve this SIJ pain for you. Um, so at Pierce he's the left-handed golfer he gets tight in the lower back and the left hip on a regular basis he has as well as asked about what strengthening exercises would help. Yeah so strengthening can absolutely help in this situation so Low back pain in golf or tightness in the low back and the hip uh, during golf is often associated with sort of repeated strain over the course of the round as opposed to one specific swing. Um, so ensuring that the muscle groups around the lower back and around the hip have sufficient strength to support the speed of the clubs, um, the club head, but also the volume of swings that accumulate over the course of the round is, is crucial really to kind of reducing the repetitive strain that the lower back is exposed to over the course of the round. Okay. Um, any of the exercises should, and any exercises that should be avoided if one has osteoporosis? Yeah. So osteoporosis is a is a condition with um, re reduced bone density, and yeah. really, it's a long term condition that has to be managed in kind of an ongoing basis. And the cornerstones for managing osteoporosis, um, one of them is weight bearing exercise. So if you see in my presentation and also my yeah. colleague Luke's presentation, there's lots of examples of good weight bearing and resistance based exercises. A physio or a strength and conditioning coach can absolutely help you with that side of things, while a doctor might help you with the medication and diet aspect of managing osteoporosis. Lovely, thank you. Um, what is, is there good exercises to ease pain in the lower back when the L5 and, and is hitting off the L5? Five root nerve diagnosed with an MRI. So it looks like he has a, a, a compression of that nerve. Yeah. So it's probably a similar exercise regime again, is it? Yeah, similar. Like, so if you're getting a nerve related pain where the L5 nerve root is being compressed and you're getting pain, say, referring into your leg, there might not necessarily be one exercise that's better than the other, but it's more probably coming down to your exercise tolerance. So what exercises are relatively comfortable for you? don't flare up your pain at the same time, try to strengthen and improve the range of motion in the key areas that you'll need for, for a round of golf or during the golf swing. Yeah. Someone was asked about what's the best exercise for lower back pain when they're playing, you know, they're already, they're halfway through the round and then the, the, the pain starts as well. So anything yeah. there? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, as we said earlier, low back pain is often associated with sort of the repeated stress of the swing throughout the round or the course of the round. So this might suggest that as the round progresses, that he's fatiguing. Um, the fatigue is then causing a, maybe a mechanical overstrain of his lower back. So by improving your strength and control around your lower back and around your kind of hips and pelvis area, later in the round, you might find that the mechanical strain on your lower back is actually reduced. And that sensation of pain or tightness is actually um, is reducing as you go. Okay, good. Now, someone's asking uh, about PRP injection. How important are rehab exercises, which are hard to do physically and mentally, um, and they're expected to do them every second day? So I suppose it, it's to stress how important they are mm, after the yeah. PRP. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to understand that the PRP injections are done um, to try and reduce some inflammation within the joint or the location that they've been injected. 
And it might offer you a window of opportunity to engage in rehab in a more comfortable manner or less painful manner. So your exercises shouldn't necessarily be painful to do, but at the same time, they should be reasonably hard to do because that's what's going to help you actually improve and strengthen the area around the joint that you're having a problem with. Lovely. Um, so as a 32-year-old, he's got sciatica, um, piriformis syndrome when golfing. Is there something he should worry about as he gets older and will it have an impact on his knees and hips? It's not something you should worry about as he gets older because sciatica, even though it can be very painful, it's something that is often relatively short lived, you mm-hmm. know, and the long term follow ups is that people do get better when they have sciatica or sciatic related pain in terms of the long term as- um, follow up on his hips and his yeah. knees. It probably wouldn't make any difference to his uh, hip joint or his knee joint. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Um, so someone's saying that they've had an MRI, mm-hmm. they've been told they need a knee replacement. Um, is there a benefit to having physio before the surgery? Yeah, I think always the the earlier you can start, the better when it comes to the kind of rehabilitation process. So if you were to work with a physio or strength conditioning coach before your surgery, you've really set the bar a little bit higher for yourself after the surgery. So after the surgery, often people will lose strength, they'll lose muscle mass, they'll lose range of motion. And if you can be working on those aspects before the surgery, you'll have a higher starting point. And in our clinic, in the sports surgery clinic, we have a prehab session, which I think is at a reduced rate to a normal physio session. Um, so if you are booked in for surgery, you can inquire about that and I would recommend it. Lovely. Okay, this is the last question. Um, Mary, she, she's recently developed pain in her elbow after golf. She's a right-handed player and it's her right elbow. Are there any particular exercises that you'd recommend for her? Yeah, so our our topic today really touched on kind of spinal conditions Mm -hmm. um, and didn't talk much about kind of the upper limb. And but elbow pain is very common in golf as well. Um, There's a condition often referred to as golfer's elbow, which might sound like what Mary is struggling with at the minute. Mm -hmm. Um, Golf is an exercise is a form of exercise that relies on gripping the golf club and swinging at high speed. So really, our grip strength is going to have to be quite high. So there is definitely some exercises which will look at strengthening the wrist and forearm muscles so that the gripping and repeated gripping nature of golf is less strenuous. Yeah, lovely. David, thanks so much for that tonight.